Okay, so one thing that you must know how to do to be successful in math is work with square roots without using a calculator. So put your calculator away and see if you can solve this problem right here. And that is the square root of 8 times the square root of 40. So what is this equal to? Well, we have a multiple choice question here. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 5 times the square root of 8. B is the square root of 32 over 4. C is 2 times the square root of 32. And D is 8 times the square root of 5. All right, so once again, no calculators. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so the square root of 8 times the square root of 40, what is the correct answer? Well, let's go and take a look at that right now. The correct answer is D, 8 times the square root of 5. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy, uh, happy face and A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for your knowledge of square roots. Uh, figuring this out is not that difficult, and it's a thing that you certainly must study uh, to be successful in math because square roots are all over the place in mathematics. And uh, you might be saying, well, I'm just going to use my calculator, Mr. U2 Math Man. Well, not so quick because uh, when you study algebra, if we have like the square root of x times the square root of y, well, you simply need to know the properties. But uh, one thing that you could do here if you did have your calculator is take the square root of 8, get a decimal, take the square root of 40, get another decimal, multiply them together, and just kind of go through and do the same thing with each one of these answers and estimate the problem, right? But that's not the idea uh, here. The idea is to uh, work with square roots. And by the way, uh, some of you might be asking, hey, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, in my math class, where do I study this? Well, this little symbol right here is a square root uh, symbol, but uh, it's also known as a radical. Okay, so if we have like the cube root of 8, well, this is not a square root, but this symbol here is a radical. So look for a chapter or unit in your math course that says something like radical uh, expressions, radical equations. But uh, anyways, we're going to keep it nice and simple for this problem. And again, uh, we're trying to figure out what the square root of 8 times the square root of 40 is equal to. But one th little thing here, uh, hopefully all of you uh, put some sort of answer into the comment section. We do have a multiple choice question here, so never be shy about guessing. Never leave a math question blank. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and talk about the property that we need to understand in order to get the right answer. And that is the following. Matter of fact, I'm just going to show you this property about multiplying square roots and radicals. I'm not going to show you the formal way. We'll just kind of take an example. So if I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, I can write that this way. One big square root over 2 times 3. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 2 times 3. Now, uh, I could see this property this way. I could have like the square root of 2 times 5, okay? And I can break up the factors here. Of course, this would be what? Well, this would be the square root of 10. So I could break this up into individual square roots, the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. All right, so this is the property that you want to know. When we have the square root of two factors, two or more factors, we can write them as individual square roots and vice versa, right? So these properties work in reverse. Now, this is hopefully not that too, uh, not that difficult, excuse me, uh, to understand. And if you know that, we can kind of come back up here to our problem and say, all right, uh, the square root of 8 times the square root of 40. So can we do this, the square root of 8 times 40? Absolutely, okay? But uh, this is not the whole story to this problem. But this is one way to approach this problem. But we want to work smarter, not harder. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, steps right now. Okay, so there's a couple different things going on in this problem to get to the final answer. But the first thing is we could take the square root of 8 
and break it up into factors. So that would be 1 times 8 or 4 times 2. And the same thing with uh, 40, okay, the square root of 40. I could break it up into its factors. Now, notice here, I want to uh, use the factor of 4. Okay, I like 4, 4 times 10, and 4 times 2. Now, why do I want to break up uh, 40, for example, not like, say, 2 times 20 or 1 times 40? Why am I thinking of uh, 40 as 4 times 10? Well, there is a specific reason, and I'm going to show you uh, why right now. Okay, so we have the square root of 8, which is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 2, times the square root of 40, which is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 10. Now, let's go ahead and break up all these square roots into their own individual square roots. So the square root of 4 times 2, I can write it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And this is just one big multiplication times the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. So we're using that property here. Now here is the reason why I wanted to have 4 as a factor. Because I know the square root of 4. What is the square root of 4? That is 2. Okay. So numbers like 4, 9, okay, matter of fact, I'll write them out here, 4, 9, 16, uh, 25, 36, these numbers here are called perfect square factors because when I take the square root of these numbers, I get lovely numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So you want to be on the lookout for factors that are perfect square factors. This is the secret to working with square roots. All right, so the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 is going to be 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. The square root of 4 here is 2. So now we have the 2 times the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 10. And our final answer is going to be the following. So we're just simply going to multiply the numbers. 2 times 2 is 4. And then here we have a square root and a square root. So we're going to use this property again, right? So the square root of 2 times the square root of 10 is equal to the square root of 2 times 10, which, of course, is the square root of 20. So now we have 4 times the square root of 20. Now, if you got this as your answer, that's very good. But uh, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. Two, 2 Math Man, why is this not the right answer? Well, there is a great, uh, great reason for that, but this is pretty good. Okay, but we're not quite done. So let's go ahead and take the next step, and that, of course, is to have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I do mention that I have this Math Academy at tcmathacademy.com. Let me just tell you very, very quickly what you will uh, find if you go to my math help program. So I offer full and complete uh, math courses. You can find links to many of those courses in the description of this video. I do a lot in the area of test prep. So if you are taking some sort of certification exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe the SAT, ACT, GED, whatever the case might be, I have a ton of customized uh, fully comprehensive test prep courses. I also offer full and complete homeschool math curriculum. And I have two great math courses for those of you that are not in school. And my first is my math foundations course. That will teach you all this basic math that all of us forgot way back in elementary and primary school. And uh, the link to that will be in the description. And also I have my math skills rebuilder course. That uh, course, I teach basic math, algebra, geometry. So for those of you that just like math and like learning math, check out these two courses. But anyways, I need your help to continue to grow this channel. So the best thing you can do to support my work here is to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well. All right, so let's get back to the problem here. So we have 4 times the square root of 20. So at this stage, it might seem like we're done, but we have a hidden perfect square factor in this 20 right here, okay? So you have to be on the lookout. So in other words, if I gave you the problem, uh, the square root of 20, could you simplify it? Well, you need to ask yourself, are there any perfect square factors in this number? And there is, because 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5. So we can take out another square root of 4. All right, so 4 times the square root of 20 is the same thing as 4 times the square root of 4 times 5. Now I can break this up using uh, that property that we talked about. So this is going to be 4 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so now we have 4 times 2 times the square root of 5, which, of course, is going to be 4 times 2 is 8, and now we just have the square root of 5. So this is our final answer. 
All right, so I can't stress enough how important it is uh, to work with square roots without a calculator. This is must-know uh, stuff, not only in algebra, but in all levels of mathematics. But to really kind of start learning about this in a course like pre-algebra. So don't feel too bad if you've never seen this before. But again, this is something that you definitely want to work on. But uh, if this little video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.